Hello, everybody. Welcome to Grounders TV. I am John Gast, and I am one of your hosts. We've got Nick Rost on here, and we got R.B. Joey. I am just going to say that now. It's R.B. Joey. And this is a new weekly show that we're going to be doing. We're going to bring you tips, tricks, in uh, information about RVing, uh, whether it's being a, whether it's a large RV, whether it's a camper, or heck, we'll even talk some tenting and some some cool tech and uh, all that kind of stuff. So everybody say hi to everybody. How's it How going, you everybody? doing? Well, I hope they're doing good after that. Don't sound so excited, yeah. everybody. No. So, <laughs> you know, it is, it is spring. Is it? I don't think it's officially springtime, is it? Not yet. Not yet. I think it's next week, right? It's a I week after. So. I think so. Yeah, I think, week I think it's after next daylight week. savings. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because typically it's two weeks after we at their after the government robs us of an hour. So hey, you know what it is. Oh. Uh, just, <laughs> it's for the farmers. It's for the farmers. I know. Yeah. Is it really? It's still the I same mean, time, though, John. Hey, right. You, you take an hour off the front. You put it on the back. You still got a twelve uh, twenty-four hour day, right? That's correct. You get to stay out while camping a little bit longer. Well, yeah, but I like it dark when I camp. No. That's true. You sit around Can't the fire, fire, you cook some weenies and some hot dogs, yeah. and you drink some beer or scotch or whatever it is you drink, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, so but it's but it's spring. Yeah, I, especially in well, Florida, it's summer all year long. So, um, just yeah. just for full, let everybody know that I'm coming from up in Georgia, and you two gentlemen are from um, Pasco County, Florida, Florida. correct? Pasco, Florida. Yep. Yes, sir. So. Um, and you guys are going to be our experts. I'm just the, the doofus that likes to do shows and see himself on camera. So I'm just, just you know, that's, right. that's what I do well. For, okay. Um, so yeah. I think out of the gate here, um, I noticed up here that a lot of the people that own the RVs are getting into getting everything ready. Right. Mm. So, you know, they've taken their covers off, their tarps off, whatever it is. I know uh, I got a neighbor two doors down. He's got this massive, as a matter of fact, I was going to ask you guys where to get one of these. Is, he's got this massive cover for, I think this is like a 42 foot, the Prevost. It's huge. Okay. But he's got this right. big, massive cover over it. So he unearthed it or he, you know, took it out of the womb and, and you know, he, but yeah, and, and I saw him the other day and he was up there, he was on the roof. He was inspecting like everything mm -hmm. on that roof. And I guess, um, that in, and I'm not, no particular order, but I guess you start from the top down and, and now he's looking yeah. for. Well, one of the things about the covers is when you, after, when you have it on and you, if it's outside, you get a lot of wind and it causes the cover to rub on the edges of the roof and okay. some people they just pull the cover off and they don't actually think about that and they just go right to camping and so your best bet is to go up there on the roof check that first make sure there's no rips or tears in the roofing so you don't get a water leak oh so i guess with all the because up there we didn't have a lot of, we didn't have a lot but i guess further north you go there is ice right is it correct? Mm -hmm. And that, that yeah. sits, and if that sits on your roof, even though it's on a cover, it's still gonna, it's still gonna move around and potentially do damage. Is, is that what it is? Yeah, there were any any movement with that cover over time on the, like Prevost is gonna be um, a fiberglass or metal roof, but on regular travel trailers with the TPO or EDPM roofing, right, that's gonna wear in. Huh. I, I, you know, I, I guess it's just the things that, okay, again, this is not what I do for a living. This is what I do for a living. That what, what you guys do for a living is, is you take care of them. I just, you know, my brain says, get out, wash it, get it ready and get it go. Of course, I've been in Florida for almost 28 years. So yeah. to me, I get up here and watch these guys in the wintertime or in the springtime go start, start taking everything apart and pulling it out. Cause if you've got a woodruff, you sent me some of the most scariest pictures I have ever seen. Um, <laughs> you've so never seen the skeleton of the roof. <laughs> I have never, ever even, I wouldn't even thought this. So I'm going to show some pictures that you sent. Now, this is what looks yeah. like after you've taken stuff off. Yes. I did not realize mm -hmm. that's the roof. Yeah. yeah. And if that's the before, sorry. Oh, I'm oh, getting there. Yeah, Don't worry about it. That's there after we go. on that one. Mm -hmm. 
So, so anywhere you see the black tape is where we ended up having to redo the roofing uh, plywood. That is crazy. I mean, to me, it's like I would have thought there's just way more to a roof than that. You know, there's a lot of nails and screws to it. <laughs> you, so, it, okay, so I guess a lot of us, you know, again, we don't, I don't know. Um, to me, it looks like I always considered my roof to be metal, not plywood. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, that's not the case. Even a lot of them that have the metal or fiberglass will have wood underneath them. Either it'll be like wood that's attached to styrofoam roofing and that goes in, in full sheets when they do it from the factory. That is, that is, that is frightening. I, I just have to say that's absolutely 100% frightening um, because I just, I just figured there's a way, there's way more uh, to a roof than that. But I guess they hey, do John. a lot for weight. They do it for, so it's lighter, but uh, I wouldn't use that OSB board on nothing. That stuff is absolutely garbage when it gets wet. At least they could have did was use a good grade plywood. Yeah. What, what, what do you do? What, okay, so my, this is my question: is is wouldn't it be better? If, um, I you know I do know I do know a fairly good amount about boats. Um, growing up as kids, I've I've, I've I've my family well not my family but I've been around boats since I was seventeen, and mm -hmm. my mother and family have worked at uh, Pilots Point Marina up in the on the East Coast and they build boats and they maintain boats and they fix boats and all stuff. So I do know, and I, and I guess when about 22, I owned a boat all the way until I was about 35. So, um, wouldn't they use Marine plywood? Uh, marine plywood is pretty heavy and it's wood cut into their profit margins quite a bit, I would say. Oh, okay. So they yeah. have to do something that's mass producible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, I've, we had one customer that wanted marine grade plywood uh, sent in, and it it took probably three weeks just to get the wood. Holy and cow. you know, if you're trying to you're trying to do that for every customer, it's right. it's just not going to work out. And I think it was like 127 dollars a sheet. Whoa, that's yeah, crazy. Compared to, yeah. I mean that that mean I understand that it's you know it's 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 something that's needed. You know, it it, it could be expensive. Now, does it add weight? Oh, or yes. is it just yeah. expensive? Uh, it, would, it would add quite a bit of weight. I don't know exactly what the uh, marine plywood runs in weight, 716s compared to the OSB, but I would Im imagine it's quite a bit of difference. Okay. So I you know, see things you don't know. Oh, and, you know, it's to me, it's, I, I look at that and I'm like, now I'm going to go into my RV and go, oh, I may have to wind up putting a cage over me on mine because yeah. I don't want anything. <laughs> Falling on top of that, you know, I, you know, you just don't. So, is the whole coach? I know I've watched some shows uh, on television. Is the whole coach sides, top, bottom? Is it plywood with? Um, is it is it ply with uh, fiberglass panels? It's a, it's a basically a luan with the okay. and then a phylon over it. Or um, some of them, like the lightweight uh, Keystone Cougars, they use like a, it's almost like a fiberglass mesh that's a whole panel as one. And then they, they put that on the side of the, of the unit. They roll it to the side of it and it keeps it from uh, separating from the wood. The phylon doesn't separate as much. Okay. Is that why you see some of them that start bubbling? You see like the little bubbles inside there. Is that moisture yeah, that's gotten moisture, in there? Yeah, moisture or water that gets in there and then it will cause it to separate. You can you can re glue it. It's a it's a pain, but it's okay. it is doable. So so you can't but, fix it, it's just expensive. So what about roofs? And, I mean, so so the pictures you were we showed there, that is that something where you had taken the roof off and getting ready to put a new roof on? Yeah, so there was uh, four sheets of plywood on that and uh, new EDPM roofing material um, made by Dicor, and they give a 15-year warranty on that membrane. 
Okay. There's a uh, newer, newer membrane out, uh, TPO, which is basically a, a PVC roofing, uh, similar to PVC roofing. Right. And that's a little bit thicker, a little bit harder to work with, but it does, it does uh, stand up better to the bridges and tree limbs. Okay. I, that's, you, you know, you, you buy these things and they're anywhere from 150 to a million dollars. You would figure those things would be bulletproof, but they're kind of yeah. not. What, what keep, you know, so is it, there is, there's got to be a, a, some sort of um, structure to keep it from wobbling back and forth. Right. Other than the front and the yeah. back. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, windshield. the windshield, yeah. but that's a strong yeah. windshield. I'm just the, saying the windshield on the A class. Is, yeah. oh the my the God. windshield on the A class. If you pull the windshield out or it breaks and has to be replaced, you can literally go inside where the steering wheel is and you can push that roof side to side. No, you like I nobody's cannot. business. Yeah. Yes, you can. That's why the windshield is the most strongest part of an A class RV. There's no Correct. ribs or. Yeah, I mean, there the, is, but they're, they're, they move. They move. Uh, are they meant to move? move okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to move as it goes down the road. If it's. <laughs> I can just see it. You're driving down the road and the windshield comes through. You're like. Whir, 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 whir. <laughs> well, this is new. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? The pride people have tried that before. Really? We've seen some crazy stuff in this business. Uh, a few years back, I sold a RV to a gentleman. It was a Bluebird bus, and he owned uh, Bryant Hot Dogs. And he left he, as he was leaving here. His wife was putting the awning out. I don't know why she was hitting the button. We had to chase him down to the discount uh, store and pull him over before we had a major traffic accident on 52. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now there's safety switches in them, so. Yeah. Uh, they shut them off, and it's not like the early 90s. It, there's safeties on everything now. Right. So, okay, so I'm, I'm glad you said that. I, the other day when I was driving my RV from uh, Florida, Georgia, right, we hit this god-awful patch of road, and I have and I've never heard this before. This was brand new, right? So I'm, we, and, we, and it was actually we were, we were going over a um, – a, a railroad crossing that we we'd never we'd never driven this way but you know there's i, I love this app there's an app that, that if you have an rv will tell you the best way to go mm -hmm. it's kind of a good you know just, so anyway yeah, we went over this thing. i came over i came over these trestles which was hard and i was pulling us a, a 20-foot trailer so we went over it. man every every buzzer every light i mean the whole coach lit up it was beep 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 beep, beep. And, it, and it would literally it kind of started shutting me down if i felt like it almost uh drifted on me is that weird is that it, it is, is that it sounds like you, no it's it sounds like you have a, a almost like a ground issue oh that's not good it's, it's, yeah it's a chassis or something for for lights and tax and then for things to feel like they're shutting down, that's a, definitely something that needs to be looked at, John. Okay. Yeah, well, I got to come back. Yeah, now you got to come to Georgia, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <it. laughs> I don't think I want to drive that's... anything out. Well, I probably will, but, you know, it'll go back and forth. So let's talk about uh, West Coast RV real quick. Um, okay. We we, we, we kind of jump right into the show and, and I really do. Uh, and this, the, the, this is episode one of 2024 and we're getting a, a new show going and you'll better find this on area 52 media group and area 52 TV, as well as YouTube. We'll actually have our own. It'll actually have a standalone YouTube uh, station there as well. Um, but let's talk about everything that you guys do on that location. So when people say, well, who are those guys and what do they do? Well, now they're, they're really going to, I literally want to tell them everything that you guys do. Who wants to go, go first? Ahead, Nate. All right. So the, basically when I tell the customers, we do everything besides tires, chassis, engine, and axles. A lot of time when I say chassis, people will think, oh, well, we don't work on the electrical of the chassis. No, we do all the electrical on the chassis besides on like the engine part. So if it's the company of Ford that makes the, the chassis and 
the front electronics and everything like that, that would be for themselves. But as far as like any wiring that goes through the chassis, that goes to the house part, we would do that. Uh, um, we do re-roofs, uh, full slide outs. We've done full slide out rebuilds. Uh, being a smaller company, we found out how to rebuild majority of the slide outs while they're in their spots. We don't have to take them out with a forklift. Um, the, if we don't do anything with uh, basically engines or transmissions, differentials. Uh, our biggest thing is uh, electrical, plumbing, uh, roofs. The um, we started doing uh, full fiberglass repair on like front caps. We get them sh shipped in the full the whole cap. Uh, we've done the full back of uh, fifth wheels. We've done. We've recently got some toy haulers in that full ramp doors that we have to do. Uh, it's pretty interesting having a, a whole ramp door shipped in of eight foot by eight foot coming in on a freight truck and having to stop half of 52 <laughs> to get this thing out of the, out of the truck. That is crazy. Now I do, I, I met, uh, I met Joey uh, a couple years back about, we were just Facebook guys at that point in time. I really never talked to him and I just love the way he kind of says it the way it is online. It's kind of neat. Right. Um, but then I had a, I had an issue. And uh, this is how I really got to know you guys. Um, my camper, my little camper, uh, my mm -hmm. electrician put in the wrong size circuit. Uh, he put in, mm -hmm. I think, a 30 amp 220. Mm -hmm. right? So he hooked and 220 to a 30 amp circuit. Yeah. I lost everything. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And then I just made a phone call to you guys. And next thing I know, it's being picked up. You guys got it. It's, it's got to come to the shop. But. And it's just, and it, it's perfect now. It's just perfect. Yeah. Uh, it, it, but, and, but I, you know, I, every time I've ever thought about what's going on, I'm sitting there going, oh my God, what are you going to do? And then I went and watched you guys working and I'm like, I had to leave because it's like my poor baby's just all door of art. It's just, it, you know, yeah. but you guys, it's all in but shambles. That's the type of like, I don't want to do. remember it this way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's amazing and uh, and uh, then you guys actually worked on my rv because we took a massive hit at a koa in well i don't want to tell where it's at but it wasn't their fault but it was a hit and yeah. it fried all my electronics as well so it's like i have electronic issues i am like a ghost yeah. in the machine at least it's not leaking knock on some wood and that's the right. business you're in look at that <laughs> right, right you know it's it's like oh, jesus but um now Joey, you, you put me on to um, surge protectors, which, again, you know, you figured out that because of the industry I am in, I would know well, this is a good thing to have. But this is not stuff that's built into your coaches, right? It's, this is stuff that you need to go purchase and get for your, for your, yeah. uh, for your coach. Co correct. And the, this is the company that's right here on my hat, Hughes. They make the Bulldog Protector. It's the best protector on the market today. Right. And I recommend it to everybody. Uh, they make several different kinds now. And they even have one where if your pet is in there and your AC goes off, it'll get you on the phone immediately. So your dog or cat isn't in an RV while you're out kayaking all day. Well, that's that's actually really good. I didn't know I didn't know it did that. Yeah. Yeah, it will, yeah, it will alert you through the through the app. The one thing that we also like about the that sets the uh, Hughes or Bulldog away from everybody else, like Progressive with the EMS protector. Progressive is very good, um, but the Progressive is not rebuildable. The um, Bully Dog one the, is actually rebuildable. You can take the back of it apart and then put the new system in there, or computer oh, yeah. board and everything, for only about $50 and compared to buying a whole another $300 surge protector. Wow. That's actually really good, but that just goes to show that you guys, I mean, I, since ever since I've met Joey, I follow everything you guys do and you guys just, some of the wrecks you got, I mean, I don't mean wrecks, but I mean, some of the damage that comes into you guys is absolutely amazing for what, and, and, and then you turn around the, the before and after pictures are amazing. It's, I mean, it's like, Holy crap, they actually fix that, especially the interior stuff. I mean, I didn't realize how in depth you guys get into your interiors, but you like literally make that thing look phenomenal. 
Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of uh, full rebuild from usually a company will repair something. One that was recent was a skylight was uh, repaired. And the older people, they weren't basically watching RVs because of medical issues. And they came back and their whole uh, Winnebago ceiling was falling down because of the skylight that was not done properly. Um, I just want to correct on the surge protector. It's it's the watchdog is what it's called. It's not the bully dog, but it's right. the power watchdog is what it is. Okay. Well, now, this, uh, yeah. you, you also... Um, it, not only do you work there on in your in your lot, which is massive. I mean, I don't. Th When's the last time you guys had any empty space there? I think it's been like <laughs> a year, right? Uh, you had to. Probably, am I right? You had to expand so you could yeah. take more. Yeah, yeah, we actually went another hundred feet, and we may have to go another hundred feet. But uh, yeah. as far yeah. as having space here. Yeah. It was probably before we got here in 1998. There was a mobile home yeah. store here, so they might have had some space somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> but you our, guys our are also parking too. area. Yeah. Now, yeah. you guys are also <laughs> mobile, right? Yes. No. And That's how, how we started the service. Travel, I mean, hold on. Um, how, hey, would, Nick, how far do you travel? I would say usually uh, – any. The farthest I've gone is is Gainesville, um, wow. but it usually depends on the rate that they want to pay and who they want to have come out. So some people will have me work them through the, over the phone instead of calling somebody out, and then they'll bring it back to us. But uh, on average, I would say furthest would probably be about forty to sixty miles. Wow, that's that's, that's where we like to stay, right? Mm -hmm. But but yeah, for the, the right client. Time. And the right money, you'll go as far as Pensacola, huh? Oh, he no, went to Lakeland or Winter Haven for uh, Team Farrell. They had a problem with their motor home. And he got up early in the morning and went out there and got their slide out in. And then they brought it in and we had to rebuild the slide, the LCI. Uh, that's what I'd like to touch on real quick, John. I was going to say, I'd really like good segue there, Joey. No, nice. yeah. let's like, talk about slide out because do those things living, are right? the scariest I'd like, things ever. I'd like Nick to hold up a motor on a Swintech system, the motor that pulls your slide in, in and out. I want you to see the size of it. No, so this is oh, basically that's for it. a camper, right? A little camper. Yeah. No, that's no. for a big motor home too. No, I've. I've seen up to 32 foot slides with this this motor in it. It is either a 300 or 501 ratio, and a way to tell if you have this motor in your slide out, you'll have a gear track on the side of your unit. It's that basically looks similar to this. So you'll, as this goes down, the motor basically tells the gear in the bottom to move this across this track. Wow. Okay. So again, maybe you shouldn't have shown that to me <laughs> because <laughs> I look at that going, I know how big and how heavy my slide out is. And that little bitty thing like that moves that. And that's the, mm -hmm. I think that's the type of track I have. There's, there's one motor on each side of your slide, right? Yeah. And the other problem is these things get confused. So sometimes when you hit the button, one of the motors will put, be pushing out and the other motor will be pulling in and your slide will be in there cockeyed. And this is when you become get a problem. You have to reset the unit. Uh, in the owner's manual, they show the, the people how to just do an easy reset. But the techs, we know how to do a hard reset on the motor. Uh, but this happens all the time, John. Kids get stuck under, you know, little toys stuck under the slide. And uh, it becomes an issue. And then it tear, tears up the slide tracks. Well, every time you call a warranty company, they want you just to change one track and, and one of the motors. And at West Coast RV, we would refuse to do it. The other thing is, RV World, all these mobile techs, national mobile techs, 
uh, lazy days, all of them. They, they, they don't even want to mess with these slides. They all tell you to go to West Coast RV and even RV1 that rides around here, a little truck. Nick knows the name of a couple of the places. They all go out and tell the customers, bill them $199, and this is what they say. You need to call West Coast RV. We can't fix this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Nick, yeah. so, oh, that's Nick will tell you this happens all the time. What is the one guy out in Lando Lakes? RV. We have Open Open what? Road that sends us. We've he, he used to repair his own RV. Really? That's funny. I was when, yeah. Open Road, a national company, sends us his RV for us to repair. Why they're in all fifty states? Open Road RV, and he yeah. sends us his yeah. RV to repair it when he's got thousands of techs on the road, we repair his RV. Nick's, Nick's my witness. I'll be no. So, okay. So I'm at an R I say, say I'm at a park, right. And I'm getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea for me to go and spray down the rails before I collapse it? On say the Swin tech slide itself or just in general? Yeah. In general. Okay, in general, I would definitely I would clean the track off and then uh, lubricate it before you bring it in. Okay. Uh, LCI for the Schwintech slides, they uh, recommend nothing besides dish soap and water, no lubricant or anything on it. Um, I personally like to spray some WD-40 on the inside shaft because it is a steel shaft. It's, that's the newer upgrade because they did have an aluminum shaft that was caught, actually twisting and causing issues. So they went okay. to steel, but we all know the steel rust. So you, if you don't put some, keep going. I, I'm 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 trying to pull yeah. up an image here. You sent me an image. Is so. What is this? So that is a uh, HWH hydraulic uh, leveler and slide out motor and solenoid block, basically. So on the right of the image is there are little uh, solenoids that tell whether to relieve the pressure as you're extending or. Uh, close the solenoid as, you, as you're retracting. And that will basically tell you your slide or your levelers to, to go out up or up and down. And each of the little tape is an identification for which, which level you're working on or slide out. So some, so some are, some are hydraulic and then some are mm -hmm. motor. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. I've always, I've one always of our, wondered that when, that, when I was pushing, you know, when I'm pulling mine in, do I need to go out there? Because I always go look first, and I just make sure it's clean. I don't, I don't, I don't put anything on it, but I always make sure it's clean because I'm always afraid that something's going to get in there and it's just going to jump off the track. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, John. Yeah. Let, Nick was going to show you uh, the difference between that Swintech slide system and a hydraulic slide system motor. Now these motors are roughly around thousand to fourteen hundred dollars he's going to show you the difference oh my now now see so, that looks like something i would expect to move a slide yeah so this is your hydraulic and this is your electronic that's amazing so there's a couple different kind of motors that are electronic too uh so some of them are the same exact thing that's your power tongue jack it's the same exact motor but it's on your slide out and it'll be mounted underneath the the unit above the vapor barrier okay and that will bring your slide in and out and there's also another one it's that's electronic it's called it's an accu slide it's made by bow and it uses this little motor and this motor basically will go into a gearbox with a, a small little brass uh, fitting that goes into the gearbox and as this motor turns it turns a gear and then they're cable driven there's about four to eight cables, depending on the slide out, the size of the slide out, and that will bring the slide out in so and out. So why brass? I, it's, I believe it's brass or gold. It's, um, but it, I'd it, actually is, have isn't to get brass it. soft. It's, it's softer. Yeah. I, when I was saying that I was second guessing myself. Well, even I don't want it to be gold either. Cause that's even softer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I want steel it's, titanium. <laughs> but it makes you think it's like mm -hmm. but that little bitty thing moves that gargantuan and keeps it from falling yeah. out 
that's another that mm-hmm. is that is the biggest fear I always have is like it's going to keep going and think thinking you know it's going to like hey I'm not going to stop now and I'm just going to ride all the way out and drop onto the ground. That can happen. <laughs> it can happen. We 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 just yeah. did a people's uh, slide out and they had it down at Camping World and Lazy Days and uh, numerous times and they kept changing motors and this and that. And Nick got a hold of it, and he says to me, he says, Dad, come here, look at this. And I said, what? He says, well, they never put the brackets on the wall to hold the slide from going out all the way. That's happening. One side was stopping, and the other one wasn't by the stop bracket, so it kept throwing the slide uh, off center. So mm-hmm. they, he had to keep resetting the controller, which is down in the compartment, and these people have been having trouble since day one. And none of these big box stores or nobody could figure out what was wrong with it. And I'm not even joking you. He was in the unit maybe 12 minutes. And he said, Dad, look at this. There's there's no stop. I said, oh, come on. Mm-hmm. We looked. There wasn't even holes to where a stop could have fell off. The factory never drilled them. Yeah, they never screwed it in. That's crazy. You figured there would be something other than a couple. I, I don't know. I, I, my brain goes into engineering mode going, there's got to be a better way to make sure that it doesn't drop off or fall out other than these little pinholes or those little stops. Well, quality Some of it uses is like that, the uh, frame around around the slide itself, but it's just, that's not the only thing that, that they're using. Basically, they'll use some kind of steel or metal that's thin. Right. And if that thing's got good momentum, it's just going to go. It's going to keep so, going, so, especially okay. the hydraulic ones. So when is the best time? What's what's the best time of year to do maintenance on your slide out on the rails? I would, if if you're using it often, I would say every three months would be your your best bet. Um, but to always check your your gears and every and bushings and stuff um, twice a year. Twice a year. If you don't use it that much, yeah. Okay. And if you don't, and if you're not comfortable, people in Florida can bring it to you and let you guys do a maintenance on it. Yes. Okay. Um, the only thing we don't do is repack the bearings. Ooh, is that a factory thing? Uh, it's, so you basically do that about every, I think it's 500 to a thousand miles. We don't do it. So I don't know the exact number for it, okay. but, um, it's definitely something that needs to needs to be done, especially on long long drives. Now, when you say bearings inside the slide outs, right? No, in yeah, the yes, axles. in the bottom of the slide out. Oh, okay. And the axles. I was talking about the axles, though. Oh. for the maintenance. So yeah, I, I okay. So his, you know, funny story. This is why I. This is like and this is why I'm part of the show because I'm the guy that's dumb and, and I don't know nothing. But we first bought this. Uh, my we first bought that rig. Um, we decided we're just going to, we're going to take her up to Crystal River and, uh, up that way. And, uh, so yeah, we did. And on the way there, it started squealing something god awful. We're like, what in the world is going on? And then I had a car come up and he goes, Hey, your tire's on fire. And I'm like, how's my tire on fire? Why, why, why is my, t- why is my tire on fire? Right? So I pull it over and I limped it back to a commercial garage that's right over the Swanee River, uh, coming back past the ag. I pulled in. I'm like, "Can you guys do bearings?" And well, first of all, I said, can, "I said, first of all, do you have a fire extinguisher?" And they're like, "You don't have one." I said, "I've already used it." And they're like, "What's wrong?" I said, "I look." I said, "Over there." He went, "Oh my God!" So he's over there. They're spraying it down, and he goes, "Your bearings are bad." I'm like, "Okay." Um, now I know what bearings are. I'm, I'm I'm not stupid. I've you know been around mechanics my whole life, and I'm like, well, it it, it didn't seem like it was bad. And the guy goes, well, have you ever pushed it all the way up and tried to move the tires? And I'm like, no. He goes, well, no. okay. So anyway, they pulled that tire off there, and that whole thing had melted. It was it was oh. crazy bad, right? And he goes, well, if this side's bad, I'll guarantee you the other side's bad. So they jacked that thing up yeah. in the air, and both of those tires just did this. 
And I'm like, maybe that's why it was fighting me so much going down the road. He goes, going down the road, yeah. He goes, how long have you owned this? I said, oh, we only bought it like a month ago. And the guy goes, he just looked at me, goes, where did you buy it? So I told him, he went, oh my God, they did not do a safety. I guess because the guy was an RV guy, he he had, he he has his own. He says one of the first thing they're supposed to do with these is, is pick them up. You know, not pick them up in the air, but, you know, get them up and check the bearings and Just stuff like that. Up, yeah. And they didn't do it. So that was a $1,500 repair that he had to put, put. He took both tires off, repacked everything, put it back in there. And that was a very big lesson learned. So now when I hit a certain mileage, I go find. Matter of fact, I think I spoke to you a couple months ago about um a company that would would change them out for us because I know there was some other company you guys were using, but now you recommend these guys, but I never got to do it. So it's going to go get it done. Uh, I think it's uh, next week when I get back from Florida. So, yeah. So, yeah. So watch the bearings because, you know, I know you're not supposed to take your jacks all the way down and lift the tires up, but take the jacks all the way down and lift the tires up and see if you can wobble them tires. So if you can wobble them tires, you got problems. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. So, yeah. That is so, mm. I couldn't find out which uh, what the material of, the, of that drive shaft was, but it's it looks brass, but it was like a goldish color. I think but, you're right. I think it's brass. It it's, is brass. It's, it is. Yeah, I think it's the brass. The reason I, they I make it that way is so it wears out. Oh, okay. So it's no. meant to it's meant to go away and sacrifice. It's the to, it's, yeah, it's meant to sacrifice before the pump goes out. Okay. Well, that makes that, well, that makes a lot of sense. So, speaking of the next thing that can really ruin your uh, vacation, whether you're going or coming, is your awning. Oh my God! <laughs> oh. yeah. Awnings seem to be the plague of everybody's existence. You know, here's something funny. Uh, when we bought, um, and it's I still never put one on. Matter of fact, I should have had you guys put one on. But when I bought my little camper, um, <laughs> on the outside. And the one slide, I said, "Hey, it doesn't have a doesn't have an awning, you know, that comes out with it automatically." Oh, the, the old, topper, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, the old guy's like, "You don't want them goddamn things; they're a pain in the ass." <laughs> <laughs> that's, he's literally that's what he told me. I'm like, "Well, okay." Now I wish I did not listen to him because every time I open it up, and close it, I have to go up there and double check because you 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 sent a picture there, young man. And I'm like, yeah, did, oh, I see, did you get that? <laughs> I have seen this. Let me go. Let me get, let me go find this because, oh, this was a slide out. Actually. I'm sorry. Uh, where'd it go? Oh God. It was, yeah, it was on oh, the, all the garbage out. up on the top. Oh my God. It, uh, it, that's oh, nuts. Here yeah. it is. Oh, I didn't put these in order. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll just do this. I know where they're at. Uh, put it under you, Nick. Uh, I believe that was the one with the, uh, the trees. <laughs> I can't says, believe look at this that guy. someone hey, wouldn't at this check mess. this. No. Oh, here it is. Ready? Um, who in the yeah. right mind puts that in without checking it? And please don't say mm. that's mine. No, that's that one's <laughs> not yours. But that is an accuracy. Well, slide. Yours, yours was a little board. worse. Oh, thanks, Joe. I appreciate yeah. that, buddy. <laughs> I mean, when I saw that picture, I'm like, oh, my Lord. So You would think that, somebody put that up there. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> For that is all crazy. that yeah, get past the and everything. And that's on the, oh, by that the way, that's on the inside of yes. the RV. Exactly. So it didn't have yeah. a so sweeper thing to sweep all that off. Oh. It doesn't happen. It's, there's so much play in the gaskets that it will just, it pulls it with it and you would think that it would sweep it all off, but it, it does, just doesn't happen. So when you don't have the slide out camp a topper and you're camping with a lot of trees and stuff, it's best right. to go out there and sweep it off. So or you don't even have a blower. Why don't they, uh, that CC now, now I can see, that's what I carry with me at all times in the RVs and the mm -hmm. campers. I got these little mini blowers that I just blow everything uh, up up there. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I, I was so proud of myself. I am, I am the dude that I am Mr. Level. So everything is level and I've learned everything should not be level. You need to have a little mm -hmm. up so it'll all that water. Will, Cause the first time that I closed up the, um, the little camper, actually, no, the first time I took the big RV, I closed it up and everything was good. And I'm running down the road. I hit the brakes and I just got drenched. 
because water oh. came pouring over top of yeah. me. Um, and I didn't realize that, and, and your dad, Joey, he's the one that told me, he goes, you need to have those little things that come off the edge. So, and then you need to have a little uprise and let that water roll off. And I'm like, uh, yeah, because that's Mr. Perfect. I had, I, mean, I had that thing leveled to the T. You could go anywhere with a little round. I, I, I had these extra bubbles that I put them all over the place. And I'm mm. like, they're all centered. Mm. Oh, they're all centered. It's perfect. Nope. Yeah, don't the, do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> don't do that. Just a little tilt. That's <laughs> yeah. all you need. Yeah. yeah. And then slide uh, up. Become... What's that, Joey? That's the biggest misconception when they go buy an RV. The book says make sure the book actually that they sell with the yes. RV. Yes. Make sure the RV is perfectly yep. level for refrigerator operation. Correct. And, well, that, and that's, that's what I was reading. That's great for the refrigerator, <laughs> but it's hell for everything else. Right? You just got to drop one corner, you know, whichever corner you prefer, and let the water drain off. I mean, that's why they don't make flat roofs on houses. Where's the water going to go? Right. They're going to sit up there. So... Good, that's a good point because we're, we're, we're talking about awnings now, right? So when you do, when your awnings do work <laughs> and they come mm. all the way out and they're down there, you, you should, you're supposed to take your, like my, with mine, I've got a pull down arm that kind of just mm. pops it down enough. So when it rains, it, um, it just rolls right out and I don't have to worry about yeah. pushing up on it. Like I had an old RV and I love this old RV because First of all, it was given to me. I had no payments on it. Then it was a 1999 um, hurricane. No slide outs. See, uh, dude, I'm, I was good with it. Believe yeah. it or not, yeah. I was okay. Because no, it was the way they built it on the inside. They made it where you're not walking around furniture and stuff like that. It's it's open, yeah. right? And everything's open, not yeah. as yeah. deep. But I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, but that awning uh, didn't have a, a tilt side to it so every time i had to come out and it was start raining i had to start push i was pushing on that on it <laughs> until i pushed through one day and i'm like well that sucks so i had to pay no you know, geez, no i had to get a new one on it's like so when i sold it i said well the best thing on this thing has got a two-year-old awning <laughs> it's 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 yeah. it's, it, you know, it's a good it's, selling it's good. point everybody right, wants you know? an awning exactly but those can those can really mess your day up because sometimes mm -hmm. they won't come back in and then you can't leave yeah so a lot of them do have manual overrides, um, whether you have to break out the manual to actually figure out how to get it done, or some of them are just, you can see them right away. And, and the top of the motor will be a, a little 12 millimeter uh, bolt, and then you just tighten or loosen or tighten it, whichever which way to get the awning in or out as, as you need. Right. Uh, there's Dometic makes one. It's a, it's a weather, they have a weather tech and it's a Dometic 9100 that you actually put the you put the manual if you had the manual on and you put the strap into to it and on the right side of the there's of the motor there's a little screw on the top of it right. you take that screw out while someone holds the strap and that will bring your awning back in so you're not you're not stuck it, it, um we were see we my wife and I were up in a Cedar Key and I think I called I I I I got to text you and I was like Hey, my next door neighbors can't get their awning in. And they had never, it was brand new. It was a brand new, it was a class. It was a cab over. So it was a, was that a class? B? No, C class. C class. C -class. And C -class, you're yeah. like, oh, do this. No, I'm sorry. It was your dad. And then your dad said, I'll call Nick if he can't get it fixed. And your dad walked me through it. And I'm like, I went over and said, I was like the hero. I'm like, well, you do this. And do, 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 do. And, and the guy goes, dude, how'd you know that? And I, I first I was going to go, well, I'm just that smart. And I'm like, nope, I know one of the best RV guys in the freaking state of Florida. He told me exactly what to do, what you needed to do. And this is, and, and he goes, oh, okay. So he, he got a, some wrench thing. And I'm like, bro, I got you. I went over and I had I had my power tools and I'm like, here's a battery operated, here use this thing, and he was like, oh that's so much faster because he was over there trying to crank that thing. I was like, yeah, you're gonna be here all freaking day because it, you know, three or four cranks it would move like that much. It's like, oh yeah. I guess the gear ratio on those is really high, right? Yeah, it's um, it's close to I. I think they're 300 to one also they might yeah. be a little bit a little See, bit. that's 
Jet, that's crazy. You, you, you're just crazy. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're sitting there spinning that thing, and oh. you can't use it. You can use a compact drill on them, but you can't use an impact. The impact's no, gonna no, break that go, shaft. Do, 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 do. Yeah. You have to use a just yeah. a normal drill. Yeah, that's what yeah, I did. That's what I gave drill, nice my... and slow. Yeah. Well, okay, so some people we get them. Well, so I was, I was, um, you know, I rent my camper out, as you guys know, and um, I was at a, I was at a park, and I was picking my camper up and um there was a guy next to me and he had an impact wrench trying to bring up his um stabilizers oh yeah, and i walked yeah. over i'm like dude you shouldn't be using that on there he goes why i said because you're beating that screw as you're doing that and, and it's in your mm -hmm. you're, you're cutting into it i said here i had an extra drill i said just use this one he goes that won't do it i said Dude, there should be no pressure. Dude, that he yeah. had those things so far down that he was almost trying to lift the camper. Even I know, okay, that's just there to keep it stabilized. He had literally lifted that, trying to, again, trying to be Mr. Level, right? Mm -hmm. And he had that thing so, I mean, it was like the, uh, now I understand why he was using the impact because that, that's all it could use to get it down. I'm like, yeah, he just, needed it. <laughs> you, 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 that's not what you use on these. And that's not what that's for. And you could tell it was brand mm -hmm. spanking new. And it's not like I know everything. I just, I surround myself with people that do know everything. Um, and uh, your dad actually told me don't use an impact along, you know, when I first got the camper. So um, it was right. quite an interesting journey that i've learned so we got about nine minutes left and i know we we've talked about slide outs we've talked about this and i think next week we're going to get into the ac world correct uh, and some pre yeah, i think we're going to get into a couple of things yeah but like that i also want to end this thing so this is where we get into some tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff so in in your professional opinion let's mm -hmm. let's name five tools that Every RV guy, camper guy, um, if you've got something that you've got either slide outs or, or, or cranks or something like that, what are the five tools that like every single person needs to carry in their rig? Well, I would say one, definitely an air compressor. If you can, uh, another one would be if you can have uh, some kind of little socket set would okay. be ideal. Um, I tell most of our customers carry fuses and a multimeter and try to familiarize with it because at least if you're stuck out on the road, you can call me and I can run you through something. And if I need you to use a multimeter, you feel comfortable enough using it. Um, okay. No, what about you want to add anything to that? Can we get a couple more things? Come on, Joey. Talk to us, baby. Okay, yeah. Talk to us, baby. You need to have a battery operated screw gun with a little sockets that go with it so like if you're on and get stuck open or whatever you can use the little battery operated drill uh, i always tell people to carry duct tape in case there's an issue that they have to tape something uh, we use a black gorilla tape from home depot it works the best uh, say for instance your side panels coming loose on the seat class and you're going down the road at least you can tape it so it doesn't blow off and crack uh green gobbler uh what is not that? A tool, but it's this stuff is the best for your black water tanks uh if they get clogged up you're at a campground okay because plumbers won't come out and fix this it's called green gobbler you pour it in and a little while later your, your plumbing issue is solved i don't know what's in this stuff no. but huh. it, there's no chemicals yeah and it just deteriorates everything in your black tank wow yeah, it's eco-friendly oh it's eco-friendly yeah what else Nick? Yeah. so yeah. i i think i think what we should do as a as a not only as a, a cool tv show because we're a cool tv show you know what i'm saying us three guys we're, we're gonna cool. get there we're gonna get there right <laughs> hey, um anybody I, to rvs is cool Right? <laughs> it's just all one big happy family. Mm. That's it. Um, so, once we get parts. Once. <laughs> hey, John, I got to tell you, me and Nick go camping up in home Sassa. He takes our our big C class, and I drive the truck. And the minute we get there, he says, "Back that truck in, so nobody sees that tailgate." I don't want to <laughs> be working all weekend, so we had to put the tailgate down. <laughs> 
I, I think what okay, so Grounders TV, and we we can get we can talk more about this off air. So I think we should get together and we should make a we should sell um, a road kit, right? Okay. So we 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 literally will build like like we'll put it in a a small bin because not everybody has really mm -hmm. big you know cargo containers. My camper. Yeah. I love my camper, but man, there's no storage room in it. I mean, there is, but there's not enough for me. Put it in like a little black okay. bin and we'll give them something like this is right here is what you need to keep. Mm. And then we'll put a list together on the website and, you know, and we'll always say, this is the stuff that you need to have. Because I'll tell you in the beginning, I didn't know what I needed and I didn't have anything. Mm. You know, well, you always need a pressure regulator. You need your water hose. You need a septic hose. I mean, unless you're, you know, dry camping. Right. Um, there's, it's like we said in the beginning, surge protectors, good thing to have, uh, if you're newer to camping and you don't know the parts that you're going to and it's an extra electrical cord, they can get you to where you need to be. Cause we get a lot of customers that run off generators cause they get to the park and say they're in a C class, they get all set up and everything. Next yep. thing you know, the plug don't fit, don't reach. And that's, that can be an issue for. You know, some parks don't want you to run the generator all the time. Some of them don't want you to run the generator at all. If you do, uh, if you do harvest host, typically they have a quiet hour, at, and that's typically from ten o'clock until eight o'clock in the morning. Eight. Okay. They don't want yeah. any, they don't want any noise, so you can't run mm -hmm. gens. So you better have a good house battery. And that's another thing too. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize this is boy, those house batteries are really important. <laughs> Just yep. saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's they usually only last about three to four years. They yeah. they don't last forever. Stay away from interstate batteries, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, please, I've learned that the please, hard way. God. So <laughs> anything that comes everybody from a auto parts store, don't buy it. Oh boy. So I know everybody is hating on TikTok right now. Um, so and I, I, I here's something I also found uh, the TikTok shop is partially Timu. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. But they are no. right. Right. That makes so, sense. But I ordered I've ordered some stuff off of TikTok to keep A at my house and A in 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 my um in my uh in my truck and my campers. And you said mentioned something about a multimeter, right? Mm -hmm. I probably have found one of the best and most easiest to use little multimeters off of TikTok, which is it came from Timo. I, I know where it came from. Okay. And I got it about uh two months ago. And now being doing what I do for a living, I have a ton of multimeters. I have probably seven and some of them are very specific to what I do. So they can't mm -hmm. be confused, but I tell you what, I got this, I got this little thing. I think it cost me like $16, super cheap, but that thing does everything. And it's as accurate as I've put it up against my other meters just to see how accurate mm -hmm. it is. Dude, and it is it is phenomenal. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start leaving. I'll start putting links in, in there. And uh, one of the things I will, sh I will I'll, I'll show next week is, and I know you're not supposed to do this. Everybody sees my air quotes, right? You're not supposed to do this. Yeah. <laughs> but I bought I bought this um, propane tank um, apparatus that allows me to fill my little green tanks. Because sometimes I forget to go and get a new green tank for my cooker, right? You know, my gas stove that runs on propane. So now I carry a bottle of propane. I carry a, I a little bottle. And it will literally allow you to fill your own little green tank. And I've done That's it now awesome. six times. But you're not supposed to do but that, But you're John. not supposed to do that. That's <laughs> not what they're made for. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, you're not supposed to do your yeah. own mechanic work either, but uh, you goofballs nope. do. So, yeah. I can tell you a little Right? So I can I just, tell you a little but, secret. You can just buy an adapter and run another propane line out to your gas grill from your main tank. I have thought about that, but sometimes, like, I don't want to lug that big old thing, and I don't want to go to the store and buy. The little I mean, After a while, you spend enough money, and, and my kids like to dry camp, and my kids like to go... Um, old time camping. So and we'll take a little stove and I forget to go get the green bottle. Now I just go fill that bottle up and say, here you go. You know, it oh, does a good okay. job. It does a good job. I know we're not supposed to do it. Yeah. 
Don't do. Don't, I'm a don't professional. Forget it, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, uh, thank you for watching. It's been. Uh, it's, I hope. I hope you enjoyed this show. We've kind of gotten down into it. Now, what I want from our viewers is, I want our viewers to give us where they think are good campgrounds, because we all have our own opinions, yes. right? So, mm -hmm. and not only we're we going to do this, you know, this show, but we're also going to be doing, this, you know, we're going to look, we're going to talk about campgrounds. We're going to talk about good locations, good destinations. Um, I, I think that if we just bring this all full circle, I, th I know we're going to have guests. I think uh, Joey's working on a guest probably coming up pretty soon already, right? Um, some uh, the electrical Yeah, I'm guy. trying to get the guy, yeah, from Hughes Supply that sells the, surge protectors surge i'm protector. trying to get him to come on he's a real good guy okay so we've got about 45 late, seconds late. left uh do you guys want to give a real fast tip i mean you got to make it quick you got 40 seconds now good nick give it to him well since we, we started on roofs and just to say that just because it's not rainy season does not mean don't go and seal your roof there is so much humidity and condensation and the AC is always running and draining. And the biggest problems we have where the AC drains to is your front cap, that front seam. It's when it's open, all the condensation from your AC and it's going right into that drain. And then along with the back on the roof, the caps on the side, they're known to leak and your condensation is going there also. So definitely seal your roof just because it's not rainy season doesn't mean don't seal it. Thanks, Nick. Hey, everybody. We'll see everybody next week on Grounders TV. Have fun. Happy camping.